What's going on you guys? Today we're going to talk about Airbnb trends from 2022 to 2023, which can help set some expectations for the upcoming year in 2024. So I've been in the Airbnb space since the late 2019, and I've noticed how things have changed over the years, especially with the dynamics of the economy and some other things that are happening, uh, happening in the hospitality or travel industry. So we're going to review 2022 versus 2023. The first thing I want to note is in 2022, we had the tail end of the post-COVID travel boom. This really started to happen halfway through 2021. Interest rates were still really low, which we're gonna to get to here in a minute. Um, everyone was cooped up in their homes, especially in urban areas. So people were still flocking everywhere to rural destinations. There were a lot of markets that peaked, and I mean like tripled in demand overnight in 2020 and 2021. These are like small markets outside state or national parks. Um, they were usually like driving distance from major metropolitan areas, usually like one to two hour drives. Um, and a lot of that demand has subsided in 2023. So it's really important to look at the data from multiple years back, not just 2021, which a lot of new investors made that mistake in 2022. They overpaid for homes because they only looked at the trailing 12 months of data in markets that had more, more than usual demand, I'll say. Um, so we had the post-COVID travel boom and like, it started to die off at the end of 2022. And then what happens in 2023 is that travel trends start to normalize. Now, if you look on AirDNA site, which I recommend doing, not just at their data and analytics, but at their blog, they put out posts every quarter and every year on travel demands around the world. And something that I found interesting is that summer of 2023, I'm pretty sure was a record in demand um, as compared to anything pre-COVID. So it's still trending up although some of the demand compared to 2022 had gone down a little bit. So while things are going in the right direction for us as short-term rental investors, just know that there was a big peak uh, in demand in this year, and this time it's starting to normalize. So when you're looking at data, make sure you're looking at the past three or five years worth of data so you can notice trends, because that's what they are, they're trends. Nothing is absolutely static forever. Point number two is we had a massive uptick in market supply, not in the supply of available homes to buy. Actually, we had um, not many homes on the market. What we had was a giant uptick in supply in a lot of markets um, in terms of short-term rentals and Airbnbs. We noticed this in a lot of those smaller to mid-sized vacation markets, as well in the big traditional vacation markets as too. Um, and a lot of urban markets experienced a major spike in supply once the travel came back to those cities. Now, ultimately, when travel normalized, travel demand did, what happened here? We saw REVPAR, which stands for Revenue Per Available Rental. Sometimes this is depicted as REVPAL, which is just per available listing. Um, and anytime you see a decrease in REVPAR, and there was a big article that went viral on, uh, in, uh, what was it, Twitter, um, and all these other so, uh, social outlets, that REVPAR, like revenue was tanking all over the place. And truth be told, it's not tanking in every market. There's just a couple markets where REVPAR definitely went down. Total market revenue divided by the total number of active rentals in that market. So when you see this number go down, it doesn't mean you can't make money or there's diminishing returns for everybody. However, you have to fight and scrape for every booking and every dollar that comes through the door. So make sure to pay attention to this number on AirDNA. You guys can see REVPAR um, historically and how it changes year over year, month over month. Important number to know. Next thing we noticed was 2022, the demand for short-term rentals was through the roof. This was true in still rural areas, vacation markets, but also as cities opened up, as bigger cities that had more strict COVID lockdowns or mandates, when those started to die off, um, market demand went through the roof. And a lot of travel that was in uh, rural areas, vacation markets started to shift back and normalize to cities because people could go enjoy things like concerts and sporting events again that they hadn't been able to do in two years. So while market supply went up, demand also went up. So that's why in 2022, it was still really fruitful until demand started to normalize into 2023 where demand was steady, but there was a year over year decrease from 2022 in a lot of markets in terms of uh, the amount of travelers that were traveling there. Um, Obviously, this is no new news to anybody, but it's really important when it comes to uh, being an investor. 
interest rates started to increase. So in 2021, everybody was buying every piece of real estate they could, not just people, but uh, companies and hedge funds were buying up real estate. They wanted to lock in that two or 3% interest rate across the board. And they wanted to just buy it just for the sake of locking it in. Everyone saw the writing on the wall that rates were going to start to go up. So the Fed could basically stabilize um, the economy and curve inflation. So that's what they did. They started to increase rates in 2022. And then in 2023, you guys know the story, rates have skyrocketed. So what does increased interest rates do to you? That makes your debt service on your mortgage higher each month. So your uh, return on investment is lower because the higher your mortgage, it's just more of an expense to pay each month. So your cash on cash return goes down, your overall cash flow goes down. However, these were two very different environments to buy in as an investor and even sell in too. Uh, real estate prices were basically peaking in 2022. They dipped a little bit, they came back up in 2023. But in 2022, it was extremely competitive to buy. Not quite as bad as 2021, but it was still very competitive. What I mean by that is all these investors or home buyers were looking to lock in that low rate uh, before rates went up. So it was very competitive and there might be 30 or 40 offers on a single piece of property that was a good potential home or a short-term rental. And so people were waiving appraisals, contingencies, all these other things just for the sake of getting a home. I lost out on so many offers on homes for people that were buying, in some cases, all cash, 100 or 200,000 over asking price. It was literally absurd just to lock in that lower rate. Now what happened in 2023, rates went up and the Fed is accomplishing most of what it's trying to do. Housing prices haven't quite come down as much as I think they'd like it to see, but now buyers have the advantage. You don't have the advantage in terms of locking in lower rate. However, now there's um, not as many buyers out there that are willing to go buy homes. So me and my students have purchased homes this year in 2023, and almost every single time we're getting seller concessions, we're getting under asking price, we're getting under appraised value. So think about it this way. If you know you're gonna invest in real estate long term, don't just wait for rates to come down because what's gonna happen is when rates come down, prices are gonna go up. It's rarely, this is what uh, my, the VP of my company says, it's like a seesaw. When one is high, the other is low. It's rarely in history you're ever gonna see a point in time where rates are at all time lows and prices are at all time lows. Um, so now is a good time to buy where you can marry the house and date the rate. If rates go up, you're gonna look back and be glad you locked in an 8% rate. I know that sounds crazy, um, but if rates go down eventually, you have the opportunity to refinance. So we already touched on this a little bit, but real estate prices went through the roof in 2021 and 2022. A lot of things contributed to this, lower interest rates. The Fed printed like $9 trillion over the past bunch of years, and that has caused massive inflation. I don't care what anybody tells you, the number one cause of inflation is literally printing money and increasing the money supply. It devalues the currency. That is why assets go up. That's also why it's important to invest in assets, right? Because if your money's sitting under your mattress or in the bank account, you're gonna get crushed when the Fed prints money. Um, but if you invest in real estate, you'll capture that appreciation long-term. So um, some trends that I want you guys to focus on that we've pivoted to, and it's stuff we've already been doing, but we're putting a larger emphasis on, Airbnb specifically. So I'm gonna come back to experiences, but booking lead times have gone down, and that's a normal thing in supply and demand. When supply goes up and demand is down, they have you know, a ton of different properties to pick from, they're gonna to wait to get the best deal possible. Go back to 2021 or early 2022, there was literally not enough supply in a market. You could throw any property up in a place like the Smoky Mountains last minute and get premium rates and it would almost be guaranteed that it'd get booked. And if you had a cancellation, that booking, a new booking would come in within 24 hours. Booking lead times have shrunk. So in some cases you might be getting booked 40, 50, 40 to 50 days in advance. Now we're seeing a lot of bookings come under 30 days. So it's becoming more challenging to price your property. Um, so what I recommend is don't tank your prices anything under 30 days. You kind of want to figure out what the average booking lead time is and start to trickle down your prices in order to get booked last minute. But the reason you don't want to tank them too far in advance is that you're going to miss out on some of that revenue. So a lot of people are seeing diminishing returns. And my two properties in Fort Lauderdale, this has been killing us. We've actually had far less cash flow this year than we did in 2022. Last thing I'll mention, 
this is the most important thing that you can do. If you guys are still watching this video, experiences is what Airbnb is focused on. If you look at all of their marketing, all of their advertising, their new release that they put out, I think in their winter release of 2022, they'll come out with another one here in 2023. Literally, it's all focused on experience and like differentiation. So you need to set up a property that's not like everyone else's. You need to provide amenities that's not like everyone else's. So you need to do market research. This is not as complicated as it sounds. Go to AirDNA, it's worth paying for a membership. Go to Airbnb, go to Verbo, go to any of these sites that have information available. Look at the top performing properties. Make a note, what do they have in common? Not just do they have a hot tub or not, but how big is their living room? Do they have two living rooms? Do they have four bedrooms? Do they have a bunch of bunk beds in the bedrooms or are they all uh, king size beds? You need to understand what's making people tick and why they're getting books more frequently at a higher daily rate than other properties. And all you have to do is take that list of criteria, work with your realtor, and then figure out what properties are available in that market. If the numbers pencil out, then that's a good opportunity for you. So that's step one. Step two is don't just set up some bare bones property that used to work in Airbnb five to 10 years ago. It does not work today. It's more competitive. Remember, so market supply has gone up. So you have to, and RevPAR has gone down in a lot of places. You have to compete. And in order to be really profitable long-term, you need to compete on value and experience, not on price. So I can't express that enough. Our properties that we've had professionally designed by Summer Led Designs drastically outperform our other properties that we designed our, our own back in the day. So if you guys want to work with Summer Led, I'll drop a link to their website below or work with a professional designer who understands short-term rentals and understand what type of design and amenities and features are going to get you booked at a higher rate, not just making a space look pretty. So those are the main differences between 2022 and 2023. My predictions for 2024, I would focus all on experiences. You don't have to have a massive seven bedroom vacation home to make a lot of money. Some of the people making the highest return on their investment are little tiny homes, glamping, unique experiences that kill on Airbnb, having great photos, great amenities. Um, if interest rates start to go down, I think there's going to be a buying frenzy. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Interest rates, may, interest rates may continue to trend up, but just keep an eye on that. I wouldn't wait to buy and wait for lower interest rates because what's going to happen as soon as rates go down, this is going to happen and you're going to be back on the other end of the seesaw. So focus on experiences, do analysis, do your research, make good buys, and then market your property in an effective manner and you guys can still make a ton of money. Um, if you haven't already downloaded my free ebook, it's not just a one page PDF. It's a seven chapter ebook with tons of information, especially if you're new to short term rentals, I'll drop it in the description of the video below. Make sure to download that. If you guys got some value out of this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content.